Hello, Royalty. Good morning and welcome to our touch point today. My name is God Gift Austin, and this is your, your touch point. Like we used to do it, we pick our topics, we deliberate on them scripturally to find out the mind of God in those areas of concerns raised and how to respond accordingly. In so doing, those questions have lingered over the years in our heart and sometimes seem to have defied us as I've been tackled. I have the assurance that your questions have been taken care of in this platform. All you need to do is just to join us on our YouTube and Facebook pages and do the needful. Click on your notification button, go through the messages that have been uploaded, over 300 of them. Before you finish, you discover how much God has dealt with your own issue. All right. I also encourage you to use the comment section for your testimonies and help us to share these messages. Let it go by that the world at large is our target. Let everybody come and embrace what God is doing in this ministry. Let us pray. Father, we thank you for yesterday, today, and forevermore. We thank you, Lord, for impartations. We thank you, Lord, for these lives and souls that you are blessing. We ask this morning, O oh Lord, like you did yesterday, do much more in the name of Jesus. You are always calling people to listen to you. We ask, O oh God, call more people. Let them hear what you are saying and get blessed as well. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Beloved, this is our third day on this new topic, agreement. Agreement. And the question we were actually dealing with, we started with yesterday, is that how can we agree with people? How can we come to agreement? And you see, one of the points we are looking at, or we saw yesterday, is that being united in thought and purpose helps us work towards agreement. Remembering that our purpose is to obey and serve the Lord will help us achieve harmony. You know, the goal and objective is peace, be at peace with all men. So if you are not a peaceful person, you can be said to be working for God, or rather working for yourself, because God is peace personified. Let's look at more passages. Ephesians chapter 4, verse 15 to 16. Instead, we will speak the truth in love, growing in every way more and more like Christ, who is the head of his body, the church. He makes the whole body fit together perfectly, as each part does its own special work. It helps the other parts grow, so that the whole body is healthy and green and full of love. Praise God. So what we make about this is that when our relationships are grounded in God's love, our pursuit of God's truth will be more productive. In that search for truth, we must never forget our highest purpose to love and serve God as one body. Praise the Lord. So next question we are going to look at is, what do we do when we disagree? What do we do when we disagree? In Philippians chapter 3, verse 15 to 16, let all who are spiritually mature agree on these things. If you disagree on some points, I believe God will make it plain to you, but we must hold on to the progress we have already made. We should start with God's truth as a point of agreement when it is easier to blend our divergent points of view. All right. In James 1 verse 5, if you need wisdom, ask our generous God and he will give it to you. He will not rebuke you for asking. Another in 2 Kings 1 verse 3, for the angel of the Lord told Elijah, who was from Tishbe, go and confront the messengers of the king of Samaria and ask them, is there no God in Israel? Why are you going to Bathsheba, the god of Ekron, to ask whether the king will recover? Now in 2 Samuel 5 verse 19 also, so David asked the Lord, should I go out to fight the Philistine, will you hand them over to me? The Lord replied to David, Yes, go ahead. I will certainly hand them over to you. So we need to know that we can pray for God's direction and ask those 
we disagree with to pray as well. This will help us open our minds to find the most, uh, the most God-honoring solution. I want us to stop here and meditate over the things that we have had so far. And if you want to give your life to Christ, quickly pray and say this word with me and say after me, Lord Jesus, thank you for today. Thank you for your love. Thank you for your word. Please save my soul from eternal condemnation. I don't want to die without knowing you. Wash me by your blood. Write my name in the book of life. Delete it from the book of death. Give me a, a fresh start and a new beginning. Breathe upon me the breath of life. Satan, withdraw your filthy hands from my life. You did not make me. You cannot keep me. The Lord died for me, and to him I have returned today. Thank you, Jesus. I am born again. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. If you have prayed this prayer with me this morning, congratulations. And I encourage you to keep feasting and fellowshipping with us in this fellowship, in this platform. You can never get it wrong doing the right thing with us. The Lord has prepared all this to equip you and to make you who he has designed you to become. And as you do that, may you be blessed in the name of Jesus. To the entire generation of congregation, I pray for you. The hand of God is upon you. This new season, this new era is your new entrance. Whatever you lay your hand to do will prosper in the name of Jesus. You will break even. In Jesus' name, we pray. Go and prosper. God bless you.